counselors and school counselors to be. Thank you guys so much for coming to my channel, The Inspiring School Counselor. And as you guys can already tell from the title below, I'm going to be showing you guys how to use Google Forms in order to create your needs assessment. So I'm excited to be doing this with you guys and hopefully you guys are excited too. If you have not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time I upload a video. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, one thing that I can say is if you have a Gmail account, then you're automatically gonna have access to Google Forms. So go ahead and get in, go into your Google Forms. Um, if you don't know where Google Forms is, all you have to do is just go to your Google Apps. Um, and you can even do that by simply going to google.com, making sure that you're already signed into your Gmail, um, and then you can click on your Google Apps scroll down and then you're going to find forms and once you hit forms then it's going to open you up to this page right here now you might have google forms as an app on your phone you can go ahead and just click on that and it should um, open you up to this page as well so let's go ahead and get into this now i do want to point out that they do have templates in here um, that can be very useful for you guys. Um, for one, they have, of course, your personal templates. You have your work templates. But then you also have education templates. So you can feel free to go in there and you can actually use those templates and you can change different things around that's going to best fit what you are doing. And one thing I do want to highlight, they do have an exit ticket there um, right here. So if you open that up, maybe you could change some things around so that whenever you're done with a lesson uh, with your students and you can see like how much they have grasped, um, you can kind of, you know, do an exit ticket with them. But today we're not worrying about that. We are trying to uh, build a needs assessment from ground up. So we're going to click on that plus sign right there. And it's going to take us to this page right here. So I want you to go ahead and title your needs assessment. You guys know I have to do my disclaimer. Please forgive me for spelling things wrong on here. Okay. You guys know, especially when you're going live or something like that, that's when all the mess ups want to happen. So we have our title in. Now I want you guys to pay close attention to this form description. Um, this is going to be very helpful for you to just put in something to be able to describe to your audience basically what your needs assessment is going to be doing and how it's going to be helping the students. So um, you want to definitely utilize that description as well as put in like a deadline when they need to get this needs assessment done. I think that's important as well. Now, when you are creating your needs assessment, you can do it, you know, different ways. You can create a needs assessment for a specific audience, or you can create just one needs assessment that you can send out to everyone. Um, so what I mean by specific audience, that means you can send out a needs assessment for just the parent, just the teacher, um, and just the students, or you can send out a needs assessment that's going to address, you know, all those people. So it just depends on how you want to do it. But I put parent right here because I want to send this needs assessment out for just my parents. Now, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create this needs assessment based off the needs assessment that I used last year. Um, and so you guys want to see me look off to the side as well because I want to make sure I don't leave anything out. All right. So now we can get into our first um, box, which says untitled question. So right here, I think it's going to be very useful for you to just, you want to know what the child's first and last name is. Um, so I highly recommend for you guys to put that in there. But if you feel like you need to put like, you want to know the parent's first and last name and, and all that stuff like that, you can do that too. Um, so but for me, I'm just going to put child's first and last name. So what I love is that as soon as I started to type into this um, box, um, it already tried to formulate a method for me to use. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on this because these are the different methods that you are able to choose uh, for your Google form. So maybe you want to do a short answer. 
Maybe you want to do more of a paragraph type of response spec. Maybe you want to use multiple choice, check boxes, linear scale, multiple choice grid. So I love that they give you a lot of options that you can use. Now, I really do feel like short answer is going to fit, you know, really well for this particular thing that I'm asking of the parents. So I'm going to just leave that right there. And I just want to tell you guys a little bit about what is going on in this box. So you have this little square right here. You're going to be able to click on that and upload things, um, whether it's in your Google Drive or a Google image or a URL you want to put in. So that is what that is for. We already know what this is for. You have where you can add a question. So you can click that. And it's going to add a question below. You can import a question. Um, you can add a title with a description. Um, you can put in an image. You can add a video. Um, and then you can do this in sections. So that is something that you're going to be able to choose. Um, right here, you have a required button. So maybe you have a question that you want to make sure that your audience answer, then you're going to want to hit that required. Now I know for me, for all of my questions, I always have required because I want to gather as much information as I can. Um, so that is something that I highly recommend for you guys to do. Um, and then you next to it is these three dots and you can add a description. If you want to, you can do a response validation. Um, if you don't want none of those things, just easily just click back on it and it will take it away. Here is your delete button, and here is if you need to duplicate the question. So I just wanted to kind of give you a summary of that. Now, it's so important for you to gather at least the child's first and last name, um, and that is because whenever you are trying to do individual counseling in small groups, you're going to want to know what students that you need to grab, okay? So you're definitely going to want to ask for the child's first and last name. So we're going to go ahead and hit the add question. All right. And the next thing that I want to ask is what grade is their child in? And the reason why I think it's important for you to ask this question is because for one, whenever you're gathering your small groups together is that you might not want the first graders with the sixth graders. So you might want to just do a, just a first grade small group and then a sixth grade small group. So I highly recommend for you guys to, you know, ask that question of what grade level they're in. Now I work in a pr uh, primary setting. So I am just going to put pre-kindergarten I um school we go up to second grade so and then you feel free to keep going if you have to all right so I have pre-k all the way up to second grade so you want to make sure that you um do that now you can easily you can either do a short answer for this and just have them type it in or you can do a multiple choice I feel like a multiple choice um, response would be better than a short answer because it just leaves out trying to figure out what's because some parents they might not know how to spell some of this stuff and so it might get a little blurry so I just rather just do multiple choice for that all right so now we're going to add a title um, I do not want this description at the at the bottom but you guys can feel free um, to keep that description if you want to it is totally up to you but we're going to be getting into the school counseling services and I'm just going to click on these three dots to get rid of that description and I'm going to go ahead and add my question for this question I'm going to be asking the parents what um, school counseling services do they feel like their child can benefit from we're going to put that in there. And as you guys see, um, it actually wants me to use the paragraph method, but I do not want to use that. I'm going to um, click on the check boxes and I am going to um, begin to start putting in those services. If you wanted to use multiple choice, you can. 
It just won't allow the parent or whoever your audience is to choose more than one. That's why I'm using check boxes. We have small group counseling. And if you want to give a small description to that small group counseling um, so that the parents can kind of know what or whoever your audience is can kind of know what that is going to consist of, you can. So you're able to put that in there. Um, a group of three to five students that is dealing with a similar issue. And you can reword that however you would like. It's absolutely up to you. Um, and then you can have them choose neither. They might not feel like their child needs help with any of those things. All right. And you want to make sure you go. So obviously I forgot to hit required on this one. And good. I have required on that one. So now we're going to move to our next um, area. Um, and I'm just going to add a title here. Um, you can add a description if you want to, or you don't have to have one. And I'm just going to type in areas of need. And you can put a description there if you want, like I said before. And then I'm going to add a question. And I'm just going to list, ask them what areas do they feel like their child needs help in, need help in. And then you can begin to list them. So you might want to put academics. Social and behavior. And I'm actually going to change this method. And I'm going to use checkbox again because I want them to be able to choose more than one if they feel like they need to. And then the next question we're going to get into is just basically for them to check the areas where they feel like their child need, um, needs support in. Check the areas your child is in need of services to address the following topics. And I'm just going to give you guys some examples. It's right here, so anger management. They might need help with anger management. Or maybe even self-esteem. Maybe their parents are going through a divorce. Maybe they need help with goal setting. Organization. The list can go on. You guys, this list can go on. Um, Self-control. So the list can go on. Um, and once again, I have check boxes for this. Um, but, you know, feel free to use whichever one that you feel is going to best um, work. So this is pretty much the gist of everything. But if you wanted to end your um, needs assessment with just telling them thank you, you can I want to say thank you for taking your time to fill out this needs assessment. And then in the description, you might want to reiterate, you know, how this is going to be helping you help your child. Um, you also want to put that deadline for this, um, for this Google form. All right. The one thing I do want to point out is every time that a parent or whoever fills out your Google form, you are going to be able to get responses and they're going to show right here. If you click on responses, you're going to be able to see how many responses that you get. You're also going to be able to see like even a graph of how many people chose a specific thing on one of your questions. And what I also love is, is that you're going to be able to um, print out the spreadsheet and it's going to make your life so much easier. That's why I love using Google Forms. Um, and so that is something that you can definitely just keep in mind and love. Trust me, you're going to love that. Um, but if you're wanting to, let's, so let's say you have created this, you're done. You can send this out. You can send this out, you know, to different ones by email. Um, you can just, you know, get this link right here, copy it and send it out that way. So that is something that you can do. You can even collect any emails if you need to. 
So there's just different things that you are going to be able to do. You can even, let's just say you're still using your virtual classroom. You can embed this into your virtual classroom so that your parents can just go there or whoever your audience is can go there and click on that. So once you have that, then you're ready to receive responses. I know for my needs assessment, I actually used the school's class dojo. So I posted it up there. Um, and so I was able to get my responses that way and I'll actually show you guys. So if you guys see right here where responses is, I don't know if it's showing backwards to you guys or not, but that right there says that I was able to receive 149 responses. So that is about half of the school. Um, so you will find when you are doing your needs assessments is that you might not get every response but getting something back is better than no responses, okay? So, I mean, you guys, this is going to really help you with your school counseling program and just be able to help you organize. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I thank you guys so much for your time. If you have not subscribed, make sure you subscribe and make sure you hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time I upload a video. All right, I'll see you guys next time.